In this video, I will teach you how to res up all future employers by writing your resume in Typest. Here we have a data file in YAML format and an image in WebP. We start by creating our Typest document and loading in the data. We can just check that the data is loaded in. So this YAML file has been loaded in as a dictionary. Now let's get cooking. A very simple first step is to just put the bio here. Let's change the font. Let's create the header here. We can imagine the name, image, and contact info being in a sort of flexbox container. And you can do that in typed using stack. By default, stack has the direction top to bottom, so you have to specify left to right. Here we can put in the data.author, but it's kind of small, so let's do a text of two font units. Now, because size is the only argument that takes a length unit, we actually don't need to specify the key size. We can just have the parameter two font units, and it will understand that. And I want to make this bold, so let's do a strong. Now let's do the image. Ooh, but now it's pretty much overflowing. So we want to set the height. Now I see another problem. I want the items in the stack to be aligned to the bottom. And the way to do this is to wrap the entire stack in an align function. But that makes the container very big. So we actually want to force this container to be smaller. And the way you do that is you wrap the entire thing in a box. So now let's add the contact info too. And you can see we have some pretty icons. And for that we can use typed packages. So I'm using one package for GitHub Octicons and another for simple icons. So phone, mail, website, and GitHub. But now everything is so cramped, so let's add some spacing. On the outer stack, we can just do a full fraction spacing, so maximal spacing. And then this grid. I think I would like the column gutter to be a half font unit, but the row gutter I want to be as big as possible within the container. But if you're trying to do this, it will make the container expand way too much. So we have to set a limit on the container. We can do that here, the outer container. Maybe two centimeters. And actually, now the image doesn't need a height anymore because it will be constrained by the outer container anyways. Just a final touch is to add the line on the bottom here. A line with a length of 100%. I think it would be prettier if these links don't include the scheme part in the beginning here. So we can just remove that. And it would be nice if these links are actually clickable. We can create a little helper function, which will create a link to the real link, but the presentation part will be without HTTPS. So now we can use that here. Oh, I, I wrote this wrong. It has to be the actual parameter link string. So now they are actually hyperlinks, but we don't see that. So should we style them differently maybe? Yeah, so now the links are blue. Be too blue, we can darken it a bit. Yeah, something like that. All right, now for the interesting part. We want to read the YAML file and generate these three sections. We have projects. We will use the same technique as in the last video. We will use a functional syntax to process the data. We will use the map function, where we give a function how it should transform every entry. Because projects here in a YAML file is an array. All right, so we picked out the name of every entry. But as we see here, we want two columns where the left one is the period and the right one is the title and description. Let's make it so the columns take out one and five. They will split the horizontal space into six and the first part takes one of those six and the other column takes the rest. But we can see now this is not what we want. We actually want its period and some content. But, but now we're returning an array from the map function which doesn't work in the grid. We want to spread everything that comes from here, so we need to flatten the output. And now it's starting to look good. In the first column we've got the period, and in the second column we've got this content. There is also a description, and we can make the name bold. Now I see the row spacing is bad, so let's do a row gutter of maybe 1.5 font units. Let's do the same for experience. Now we see these parameters are common between these two grids, so therefore we can put them out and set them once and for all up here. Doing a set command will set defaults for functions. In experience, we need to read from the experience key. And its entries has period, title, employer, description. Yeah, looks good. And finally, education. Its entries has period, title, institution. And this is pretty much it. We can just do a little more cleanup. I think the line spacing is a bit too tight. And also, I would like every paragraph to be justified. So here we set the line spacing using the leading parameter and you enable justifying paragraphs with justify true. And I think these headings should be a bit more spaced too.
That's it. Links for types and the source code are in the description. If you want more content on types, check out my other videos and maybe subscribe.